Thank you, Marsha and Phil, Marina and Mary, and all of you for coming here today and celebrating poetry and community. Yeah? Um, I wanted to start off um, with a pretty new poem. Usually I just read from my book some poems and then some new poems. But today I decided to go crazy and mix it up. Um, so I, uh, as Marsha mentioned, I teach at Santa Barbara City College. Uh, I teach in the English department. And um, But another thing I've been doing is along with two other teaching artists, we've been building a modest program that facilitates creative writing and visual art workshops for students who are vets and are transition students. Uh, who are formerly incarcerated students. So I wrote this during one of those workshops where we were kind of doing the work with them and I want to dedicate it to uh, our transition students. It's called Somewhere a Watercolor. All morning I had raised fists against the clock. My digital bridges, myself. Here, there is a curl of green pasture to step into. Two cows smudged in shadow, and a vein threading mica between hills rocking up and down their grassy sea. Far away, one liar lies about another. Into a microphone, so everyone can be sure to hear what decay sounds like. While I stand in the college art gallery, today caped in rain and the Morse code of pencils trying to speak the truth. How a fat stripe of western light can gild the dullest oak and give hope there's more to living than turn to the left. Bracing for the next crash, turn to the right, maybe. Somewhere in the city of my birth, there are women swinging hoops and asabaches, beating sugar into a froth so fine a god would sell one chrome-skinned sun for a taste. When the Impressionists netted light into landscapes, they didn't care if we saw field or farmhouse, only that we felt the crossing from object to atmosphere, from the glass-edged sweat of beginning to how resistance fades into this colorless afternoon where no one writes prison or home Let's just say we all want more, and we're painting our way towards it. A tremble of mistakes brushed into a soft mask of leaves, a less relentless sky. Thank you. Letter to the right. I hope you never read my poems. <laughs> I do not care for the sweet wine you serve warm from the pantry or the email you sent about a savior at the supermarket. Here's some news. He is not blonde. He is not watching. When I saw him, he wore glasses and a beard shaped like a flame. When I heard him, his voice was a glissando of raw guitars and sorrows. America, I don't remember who you belong to. Even when I've smiled and said, thanks, I've really meant shut up. It is time to practice your hospital voice. Somewhere there are silkworms making and their music is redemption. Somewhere there is a man with a gun 
always a gun. Near my home, a fence painted with the names of the dead. Do you hear them between prayers, yours and mine? I imagine the dead are dreaming of September with its fading light and useful errands, the dead assembled in soft robes. This is the hour when I wanted to sleep, but I thought I would write you instead. Thank you. So um, this next poem has a reference to Hephaestus, who was the Greek god of the forge and metalworking and fire. Um, I published this poem uh, a while ago on an online journal and uh, made someone very angry <laughs> because she assumed that it was about um, the women that were working as sex workers on Federal Highway near where I lived in South Florida. And she felt I was exploiting them. But in actuality, the poem was really just an amalgam of my own experience and other people's experiences and imagined experiences. Um, because even though poetry is truthful, it's not journalism, yeah? But it is an entry into the imagination, as Marsha was talking about. Um, because that's what art does. It's called For the Woman on the Boulevard. You're not really crying because your car spit Hephaestus smoke into the night and is now sagging by the gutter, are you? Feeling alone and poisoned by, by vermouth and too much tobacco rolled with the last bit of spit and a one dollar bill. Can't deny the veins bracing your temples and the pending nightmares of the face. The atlas you have read every hour you have worried every dead and breathing skin. Did you just once over the toe man? Drink his thick wrists, his hands shifting, turning the wheel, calling the radio with his merengue tongue. This master crafter of all you can't, the call, the fix, the winch. Did you part your knees for him behind the garage before he took off? to rescue the next? Did he cover your mouth when you cried out? Did you like it? Are you riding the city bus, consoling yourself in the autopsy glow of the number nine, speeding through the beautiful shadows made by caged windows and weeds in fountains along the alleys? Are you comforted by your invisibility? Does it float you far above the day's shame? Is it your only weapon? Do you hear it? The whale hum of elevator carrying you home. Television, water pouring dishes, tub and teapot. Do you hear the needle spinning once more to the horizon, slowly clicking minutes towards the one true star? Are you inside it now, your bed, quilts stroking the body's line, the moon rise of head and hips sketched in lamplight, seen from perfect lawns below, where a fox pads a pale line to the inlet, the bridge to the room where you dream. Thank you. And just one more here from Tropicalia. Okay, so, um, I lived in South Florida, I'm from Miami, and I lived in South Florida my entire life until I moved to beautiful California uh, oh, six years ago, maybe, now, yeah? Yeah, six years ago, six and a half years ago. Um, 
I worked on a project in Miami where they paired uh, poets with restaurants. And so it was awesome because writers love free food, right? And can I? So um, they paired me with a little place on uh, South Beach that so, uh, sold like gourmet hot dogs. And then we were supposed to eat and then write about whatever came to our mind, really. It was kind of open. So I went ahead and wrote this, and it is called If This Were a Restaurant Review. <laughs> I'd start in scene. Something about marble and salt and the coil of curls crowning the waitress. The tide of cheese fries and burgers heading to the terrace of the Tudor Hotel. To our table, near a tourist-flecked ocean, a winter's length away from asphalt light, trains, the pie slab of five burrows still dusted with snow, even in March, New York City, where once my tie-dyed ass posed in front of Trump Tower for a photo I ruined by flipping a stiff middle finger at the glass and brass doors. True story. <laughs> On this same trip, I dropped a penny from the top of the true towers. Now unmade, but then still poking their own heads into the clouds. High above a city of glazed pedestrians who might take my copper offer straight to the nose, the flaky scalp, or at least through the toe of a well-buffed shoe. Afterwards, I sat at the Kiev and ate a cold bowl of blood. It was good. <laughs> Here on Miami Beach, tricked out choppers rain chrome on Collins Ave. Taxis and tattoo needles click in 4-4 four, four time. It's the kind of beat you can rely on. If this were a restaurant review, I would use the words retro and mustard. <laughs> Leave out how the red velvet jazz blowing through the stereo reminds me of Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver. Not the part where he's burning the tendons in his arm over a gas stove, or when he takes his date to a porn palace, but the ending, when he drives off in his checkered chariot, streets slick with rain, traffic lights washing each city block in garnet, green, the plain promise of yellow. Thank you. Okay, so I just have a few poems here. Some new poems. Uh, just a few left. Let me just... I don't know why I'm looking at my watch, because the truth is I didn't even know when I started. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, like, backtrack. Like, oh, that was, like, how many minutes? All right. So I wrote this poem um, sometime uh, shortly after the election, and uh, I had a little a subtitle of the year, uh, 2017, um, and then I've been adding each year. So now it's called How We Lived, 2017, 2018, 2019, dot, dot, dot. And sparrows unthread nests, bring their young nothing. And shadows best seen inside the pitch of a cave. And three men stabbed on a train because of courage. And jacarandas flick cinder and blacken the ground. And the harbor horn is a creature roping hulls to the reefs. And the reefs gleam with chrome and absence. And absence is welcome. The bullet is welcome. 
The malignant cell is welcome. The gray faces and their merciless tongues are welcome. And a father is reptilian in his regard. And a mother stitches her lips like a wound. And the wound smells of silence and it's blaring. And a child lays hands on a mine. And a man swallows his lies without measure. And a woman is told she is less than him. She is less than the bodies left behind, less than the unmade, the never was, the dirt forgotten by the tracks. And I no longer care about the losses. I no longer care if the last bit of bark is stripped from the earth, if the starved possum survives the road, whether my neighbor coughs blood while she drags off a red, or the hand turning the knob means me harm. I no longer fear the unstoppable diagnosis the oceans rising to such heights in my dreams they are monstrous but we are all still running towards each other in this latest hour refusing to shutter our eyes thank you thank you so much Mary's right, you guys are an amazing audience. When I look out, it's like everyone is like looking at me. <laughs> In a good way. Um, so I just have two poems left. Um, this one was inspired by uh, visual artwork that I saw at a beautiful lotus land. And it is called, What Happens Next? Not as a sparrow or a saint or any creature of intent, in the afterlife, I'll float around as I always did on this earth, losing one thing, then another. Heart a nest, tumbling eggs, and hesitation, a cave of my own making. And the choices, whether to ignore the red flecked ground, who to want, where to land, how to keep hope bright as a copper arrow. There is a story in here somewhere. Maybe it frames a city, a house, a child years from escape. Maybe it's more like a bridge, a way of returning to when pale hands spoke, stay and run in the same arc. Deep in the dirt and mint, the foil of bees and ivory light, forgetting is what happens next, as plain as a knife, as welcome as breath. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thanks again to everyone and especially to Marsha and Phil uh, for all the good work they do in poetry land and for making this world a brighter place. I would like to thank you. <laughs> Uh, and I just want to uh, close out with a poem that they were kind enough to publish in Spillway and also uh, for the great honor of nominating it for a Pushcart Prize, which really just meant so much to me, and I'm just incredibly grateful for that. Uh, I wrote this poem for my husband, partner in life, crime, and art. <laughs> and it's called Sonnet for Mark. Now wakes a path between the oaks. Now falls a spell of dove and frog. And stones dream of their mountain clans. And each stick breaks to hear its name. 
Now light edges creak, and water appears as a quick coin trick, or silk pulled from a funnel of months, now behind us at last. And shade and sky fill the mirror moving from next to next. Now do you see there is no stillness to this world? Even in sleep, a seed is knitting its breech from the dark, and the body hums on the march to becoming less. And right now, words depart, then arrive, like a brush returning to a well of color. Thank you so much. <laughs>